Good evening, and welcome to our Christmas Eve service. As you come in and um, don't have a seat, but stand as um, we just sing and celebrate this season um, with this song called Christmas Day. Well, Merry Christmas Eve. Ah, we're here. What a difference a year makes. Isn't that, man, what a, I'm just glad to be with you. 
There are some times that I would just prefer, instead of being up here, just to be out there with you. Tonight's probably one of those times, but it's, um, it is good to be here on Christmas Eve 2020 and to know we've made it to this point. Every year we get to, um, we spend the four Sundays before Christmas um, going through our Advent season, celebrating that. And so um, tonight we kind of come to the completion of that, or at least to our celebrating it tonight. The word Advent just means coming um, or arrival. And so it is the celebration that God comes in the darkness, in the pain in the chaos, in the not knowing, he comes and he makes a way. Now, there are four candles already lighted, candles representing love, hope, peace, and joy. All wonderful, wonderful things. All things that we would want and desperately need in our lives in these days things that uh, we may have tried to get to or through one means or another. Um, but unfortunately, sometimes we're not able to, to capture those things. But tonight, as we light the Christ candle, it is our confession that those things are only to be found in Jesus Christ, in their fulfillment, in their filling of our lives. We know that there is love because of his sacrificial death for us. We know there is hope in his resurrection and his promised return. We know there is peace in his reign in our lives. And we know there is joy because he gives us the first three. And so we celebrate. So it's my um, privilege tonight to, to light this Christ candle. Jesus said that, he said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will never walk in darkness, but will, but will have the light of life. And he is who we celebrate. So let's bow together in a word of prayer. Father, I thank you so much for being here with these people tonight. Lord, we know there are a lot of folks who would like to be here, um, who may be even watching online, Lord. But because of all that's going on, um, feel best to stay home. So, Lord, even though we may not all be together here, we want to all be together before your throne. And we thank you for this wonderful season. And we ask tonight that in these few minutes that we have before we go to our homes and continue the celebration, Lord, that, that you would speak to us and remind us and that we can worship you. So give us clarity of mind and heart. And give us a willing spirit tonight as we celebrate the incarnation. We celebrate Jesus' birth. And it is in his name that we pray. Amen.
In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. Yet there, in thy dark streets, shineth the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. For Christ Christ is born of Mary and gathered all above. While mortals sleep, the angels keep their watch of wondering love. The morning stars together proclaim this holy birth and praise as they sing to God the King and peace to men on earth. silently, how silently, the wondrous gift is given. So God imparts to human hearts the blessings of his heaven. No ear may hear his coming, but in this world wrapped up in sin, where meek souls will receive him still, our dear Christ enters in. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today. We can hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. Oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord, Emmanuel. Oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord, Emmanuel. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. Uh. 
I was told you we're going to join in song singing Christmas carols. So if you will join as we sing, what child is this? And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests.
When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Thank you all so much. It was wonderful. Love that song. We wanted to sing some carols.
few more carols maybe than normal because we felt like we needed that familiar we needed that familiarity and just to sing those songs I want to share just a minute or two tonight um, something that's been on my heart for this Christmas season and I can't necessarily tell you why maybe it'll make sense um, I'm hoping I'm hoping that by the time it's all done it it'll make a little bit of sense to you but it was a poem and it, the poems was entitled originally just very simply Christmas Bells. Um, but we know it as a carol entitled I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. And it was written by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. And the first stanza, <clears throat> most of us could probably quote most of that. I heard the bells on Christmas Day, their old familiar carols play, and wild and sweet the words repeat of Peace on earth, goodwill to men. Well, let me just give you the backstory of this, if I can, because this is what has been on my mind, I guess. And it was written in 1863. Now, you remember a little bit of what was going on in 1863. But two years before that, in 1861, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow's wife, Frances, had tragically died. She, her dress had caught fire, and um, Long, Longfellow was asleep. He was taking a nap, and he was awakened by his wife's screams, and he tried to put the fire out and, with the rug, and that wouldn't do it, so he tried to use himself just to smother the flames, and he was burned so badly that he was unable to attend his wife's funeral. Now, um, he, he said that he thought that... Um, Sometimes he feared that he would be sent to an asylum because of the depth of his grief. And then that first Christmas in 1861, after his wife's death, he wrote, how inexpressibly sad are all holidays. And, and then a, a, a year after the incident to the day, he said, I can make no record of these days. Better leave them wrapped in silence. Perhaps someday God will give me peace. And then his journal entry for that Christmas in December, I mean, in 1862 said, A Merry Christmas, say the children, but that is no more for me. So you can begin to feel, you feel a little bit of what he was going through there at Christmas in 1862. But in 1863, early in the year, his son, Charlie, decided that he was going to enlist in the Union Army. His dad didn't want him to enlist not because he did not believe in the cause, but rather because he wanted his son to go in as an officer. And so he wanted him to hold back, but Charlie didn't want that. And so he enlisted, and then um, he, he got sick, was sent home, and then he went back. And in December, Longfellow got a note that said... Um, a telegram arrived with the news that Charlie had been severely wounded. He had been shot through the shoulder, and the bullet ex exited under the other shoulder blade. It traveled across his back and barely missed his spine. So Longfellow and another one of his sons traveled to Washington, D.C. on December 1st of 1863 because they wanted to be able to see Charlie and to see how he was doing and to make sure that he would live. And, and they got there December 3rd, December 5th, Charlie got there. The doctors told him, one doctor told him there was no hope, but the other said, yes, there's hope, but it's going to be a long journey. And so it was Christmas Day in 1863 when Longfellow wrote this poem. He was a 57-year-old widowed father with six children. His oldest had nearly been paralyzed because his country was fighting against itself. And he wrote that poem, Christmas Bells, to try to somehow express what was going on in his heart and the dissonance that was there, trying to make sense of all of this, 
but also express what was going on in, in the heart of the country. Now, we don't have all of the stanzas um, in our hymnal. We don't normally hear, but maybe three or four, I believe that it is. But there are two others. Listen, listen to these, and it's obvious that there's a civil war going on. Then from each accursed mouth, the cannons thundered in the south, and with the sound, the carols drowned of peace on earth, goodwill to men. It was as if an earthquake rent the hearthstones of a continent and made forlorn the households born of peace on earth, goodwill to men. And then the stanza that we know that is that we would sing, and in despair I bowed my head, there is no peace on earth, I said. For hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. And like I said, this song, for some reason, this poem has just been on my mind this month. And, and I can't help but try to picture what Longfellow was going through. I mean, here was a man who had experienced tremendous sorrow and disappointment, whose life and whose family and country were in turmoil. You, those were some of the hardest years of our American history. And, and then I began to think of the struggles that we have been facing this year, both individually and as families and as a nation. And as I alluded to earlier, I mean, when we gathered, many of you were here last year Christmas Eve, and we had no earthly idea what was going to be happening between then and now. We didn't see a pandemic. We didn't understand the depth of unrest that existed between us. People have lost jobs, lost loved ones, communities have struggled. Parents and teachers are in that catch-22 of what to do with distance um, learning. And, and we see what COVID has done. And then maybe we, we get what he writes in that next stanza. And in despair, I bowed my head. There is no peace on earth. I said, for hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. But then it's as if a light came on. Something deep in his heart knew. Just like we know tonight. And so he wrote, Then pealed the bells more loud and deep. God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail with peace on earth, goodwill to men. Till ringing, singing on its way, the world revolved from night to day. A voice a chime, a chant sublime of peace on earth, goodwill to men. And I thought we need to be reminded of that in the middle of all of this. And that is what Isaiah was telling the people in, in chapter 9. Nevertheless, the gloom will not be upon her who is distressed as when at first he lightly esteemed the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. And he said, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has shined. The word, the light has come. Like I said, a couple of them. Um, Sundays ago, this Christmas may be the most meaningful Christmas we've had in a long time because for many of us, if I may, our world is darker than it has been in the past. But the darker the night, 
the brighter the light. And so in the middle of all of this, I just want to remind you that God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. Psalm 124 says, He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The people of God could have lost hope. Many times they did. And yet God continued to send prophet and preacher to remind them that he was not finished with them, that he had a plan, that there was a new covenant, that it wasn't just that God had worked in the past. We don't worship a legend. We worship an active living God who neither slumbers nor sleeps in the midst of our world. Because in the dark, God brings light. And in the fear, God brings peace. And in the hate, God brings love. And in the gloom, God brings joy. In our lostness, God sent us a Savior. Born like we were born. He walked where we walked, felt what we felt. And in the fullness of time, He assumed the responsibility for our sin. He went to the cross so we could be reconciled to God. And in his resurrection, God showed his acceptance of that sin offering, and he showed his power to defeat everything that we are afraid may defeat us. The child, the prophet Isaiah called the Prince of Peace, came to bring peace between the people of the world and our Creator. So even in the midst of the darkest of days, even in the midst of the times where it seems everybody has forgotten God, and even in the midst of a worldwide pandemic, there is still a living, active God who in His Son brings us peace on earth and goodwill. Amen. Peace comes from knowing the light that overcomes the darkness. That's why we light candles on Christmas Eve. You see that in the darkness of the world, God sent His Son, the light of life. And that's what we'll be testifying to tonight as we light our candle, is that the light came into the world and the darkness could not and cannot overcome it. He didn't come into the world to be the light. He is the light that came into the world. So we celebrate Jesus with all of our heart and we celebrate this Christmas season with all of our heart because the one who is our hope, the one who is our peace, the one who gives us joy, the one who gives us love has come. And that is what we're celebrating. Amen. Now, tonight we want to light our candles as a testimony of the light of Jesus Christ. The last few years we've kind of circled up. We're not going to do that tonight. We want to make sure that we're as wise and as safe as we can be. And so we're going to ask you just to stay in your seats. I'm going to ask um, Alice and, and Keith, maybe if you can, you feeling all right? Okay. To be able to, to come and, and go down the aisle and light the candle, please be careful. I just want you all to be safe. So as I light my candle off of the Christ candle,
We light our candle. Go ahead and stand. And we thank God that the light overcomes the darkness. And that the darkness cannot and will not win. And we celebrate that the life, the light, is life. We give him praise with all of our heart. We are in the horns of a dilemma trying to be online and wanting the light to be out. We don't know what we can do. But I thought about that too, and I thought, you know, this is not the perfect way to do that. With everybody practicing social distancing. But then I thought the light didn't come into a perfect world. That's why the light did come, because we were a sinful people. And the fall brought all of this, brought all the darkness, the sickness. We needed life. We needed life. I need light. Life. And I'm thankful for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Can we sing? Let's sing silent. We'll go to our homes. We'll eat our meals. We'll open our presents. 
We'll do all the things that we normally do, maybe a little different this year. And in all of the homes, if you could take a step back, if you could take go back 2,000 years, even if you could go back to the beginning of time, before the foundation of the world, as you see the families open the presents, they always remind us of the present that God has given us in Emmanuel. In our Redeemer, in our hope, in our peace, in our joy. We celebrate Christ tonight. As we prepare to blow these candles out, I was made aware of the risk factor that is involved. So if you would, make sure that you blow downward and hold your hand so we do not blow on our brother and sister. And wait for the candle to dry before you put it on the seat. I love being here with you in this time. Um, I pray God's richest blessing on you during this Christmas season. And then as we begin a brand new year in 2021. And again, we don't know what 2021 is going to hold. But we do know this, that in the middle of it all, God does not sleep, nor does he slumber. He is not dead. And we are thankful that we do not go into whatever year alone. Now, many of you had purchased poinsettias, and um, tonight is your night to take those home. All right? So they don't have names on them, just... You can, if you, however many you purchased, you just come up here and get them. If you would, um, we would appreciate that. Anything else, House? Susan, thank you. From, from all of our staff to you, we just wish you a very, very Merry Christmas. God bless you and I love you. You're dismissed.